Hey guys, what is up and welcome. So today I'm going to be going over the full setup and installation of the Cheer Network blockchain on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the reason for this is because I am going to be using it myself to do my uh, kind of mining or plotting and mining and farming, but you're also using Windows PC for pro in some stages of it. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward installation, pretty straightforward setup with some other tweaks that can be done if some things don't work, which I have had issues with, so I'll show you them. Also, one of these web pages freaks out a little bit in one section, which you will see, so it's not my recording and thing going wrong. It's just one tiny chunk of one website. Apparently, when I scroll to it, uh, it just freaks out and my recording software just like twitches, so I'll quickly scroll past that and carry on. Basically, what you do is go to the cheer.net website and you want to install the cheer blockchain and that's how everything is done so you click that and that brings us over to the lovely cheer network section and what you do is you choose the platform you want to use it's the freak out so for me it would be other platforms and then raspberry pi 4 which obviously i already have set up here and once you're choosing that you take you to the crypt page now they do have the experimental GUI installer or the GUI installer. This is a pretty good feature. This is the one I'm currently using. Simple, you just click it, download it, and then it gives you the installation process. So I already have mine set, uh, kind of downloaded and it would just be a simple, you know, blockchain. We're now 1.7, 1.7, but you just let's just start it up. Put in your password appropriate for your system once the whole thing actually loads up properly do you want to install the file hit install uh put your password in wait a minute and it doesn't actually tell you when it's installed but if it works for you which it didn't the first few times i had to do other things first uh i then wiped my system came back and we did it again with other things that's changed and it worked but basically it will be put itself in the accessory section of the raspberry pi because it's not like a, a general program accessories and then you get the cheer blockchain and that is it you click that load in and then you have the blockchain set up which looks a bit like this which mine is currently syncing which is why my Raspberry Pi is being a bit slow but before we get on to the actual node setup while it's doing it syncing I want to go over more installation stuff so if you can get to work there are ways you can do it without doing that so for Raspberry and yeah, so for Raspberry 64-bit, which is what you need, the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, 400, which is the one I have, which is the all-in-built keyboard everything system, it comes with 32-bit uh, Raspberry. -in. So my advice would be go on to the Raspberry Pi website, download the 64-bit version, and then uh, download the Raspberry Pi flash tool, and then you can flash the new version of raspberry and reinstall your system from scratch it will come with all the same features all the same picture feature packs that come with the normal one since it is the free uh, and fully designed one you can kind of do this export here but it didn't quite work for me so i just went and installed a brand new one and this is only your, obviously of course the first one didn't work you would open up you could like you have a command prompt or you're like raspberry pi system like command put this command in it would run it and then put this command in and run it and then you can either do this whole system here like these two here or if you scroll down a little bit more we have a headless version and the gui on ubuntu or raspberry and this is the one i did to get to work when i couldn't get to work from the other installation it's i installed those couple of things i pointed out and then i actually just copied using the copy tool pasted it in here, started it up, and it just went, no issues at all, it took a few minutes, asked me a couple of like yes or no questions based on like storage space and whatever else, uh, let it run, and then it installed the whole blockchain, and the blockchain was set up and good to go. Now, when it came to my drives, because uh, obviously for the blockchain, you're going to need to have some drives, and you need to have them actually sync and connect up properly. Now mine did not sync up or connect properly and I couldn't get them to show up anywhere. They most of the time when you open up the file manager, they will be under this file system root, like below it, just in this box here, there will be every single drive you have. 
and it'll show you if it's connected uh so you can eject it or if it needs to be connected and you click on it it will connect it all good none of mine were showing up so what i had to do was go on to the lovely Pi Hut, which have a great link, which is how to mount an external hard drive. And it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to test your drive, check the there, check the partitions, get all the names to them all, and then go through the process of telling your system to mount the drive and find the drive. What you also do is set up, what well, I, I have done already, is also mounting of a drive, which means once you plug a drive in, turn the system off, turn back on again, it will load up the raspberry and system and then the drive will just auto connect itself so it means you can turn the system on give it 15 20 minutes to kind of like load in properly load all the data it needs to load and then all the drives will slowly one by one cut themselves all up and then you can go in uh do the you know drive check make sure they're all there make sure they're all properly showing up and everything and then everything should be good to go so you can see the names of all the drives the size of all the drives kind of whatever you need to the system style it is say if it's uh fat 32 or nstf i think it's what it is uh ntsf fs got the names wrong but you can see all the information you need to about a drive so i'll link this below it's a very very good system very good web browser and just kind of basic set of website not web browser and it just kind of tells you everything you need to know and that kind of fixed a lot of the issues I had. I must have spent probably about four to five hours troubleshooting trying to get to work until eventually using their thing uh, after resetting everything again, wiping all the stuff I'd done, restarting, managing it to work. And since then, I've never had an issue. It just connects perfectly fine. And every time I plug in a new drive in, it either shows up straight away or I just quickly do this system and it comes up and shows up and works, which is great. And then once it's all set up, you can obviously load up the Chia blockchain, let it sync up. And then it's time to plot our drives. So you would add a plot. And the minimum you can do is 32. Okay. If you chose anything less, it will not work. There's a 25 option. So if you uh, went and picked the 25, you would get a lovely... Uh, well, for some reason it's going to be only 1.8 gig, which is pretty mad, instead of a uh, 200. So pretty small. Uh, if you pick it, it will tell you that for the main net, you need to have K32 as a minimum because that was only for a test net. So obviously, do K32. You can do higher if you want, but the temporary space will be going up with it. Uh, so what you need to look at is the temporary space is how much it will obviously be temporary while it's plotting. And once it's finished making the plot, it will drop down to the other recommended size. So 239, go down to 104, 101 uh 521 we'll go down to 208 so you gotta make sure the drive you want to plot on has at least a minimum temporary space before to make sure you have enough space which is obviously just common sense but uh the reason there's more of them is in the future gradually one by one like maybe five ten years down the line each k slot is going to disappear so 32 won't be big enough anymore or better so you have to replot the 33 and the 34 but apparently this is going to be like a long way down the line, as I said in my Windows one. Uh, so what you do is you choose the plot number you want to do. You can do upwards of 29 plots, which is the same as Windows. So you choose the number of plots you want to do, add your plot to the queue, choose the drive you want to do. Recommended would be an SSD because the speed is going to be considerably faster. I would not recommend plotting on a Raspberry Pi. It would take a long, long time to do because of the CPU and the RAM limits but you can put ssd in which speeds it up just plot to that and then have the final plot go to an external hard drive or a just a general mechanical drive because you don't need speeds you just need storage sites so obviously a mechanical drive is going to give you a hell of a lot more storage for your money the limits if i remember correctly was about 18 terabytes for a single drive to work on the Chia network so if you somehow have access to 18 terabyte drives go for it max them all out if that is the correct number you set it all up and then in the plot section would be a running plot which i will try and increase the screenshot of my other actual running plots instead of starting a new one slow system down you can also plot in parallel so what that would do is you set a delay of how many minutes you want it to be i do 20 roughly that gives me a good amount of time between systems and you can set plots. The thing to remember 
is for every plot that is currently running you need to add up the temporary storage size and make sure that the amount of plots running in temporary storage size won't max out the uh ssd you're plotting to because once a plot is done it will take all that data wipe it off the ssd and it'll put it onto the hard drive for you and transfer it more or less but while it's plotting you're going to have upwards of 250 gig sitting on that drive until it's done so if you put like five plots in and that becomes more than your drive size the fifth one or the fourth one would end up uh crashing not working and then you're stuck with it until you either to delete it or you know kind of leave it there until it's done but you there is other things you can do. There are more advanced options though. You're quite limited when it comes to Raspberry Pi on the actual advanced options and things you can do. So, max RAM usage. This is only a 4 gig machine, so, you know, anything over this kind of speed of 3 gig is going to be a bit of an issue and probably make you crash a bit. But the more you can increase RAM, the more RAM you have, the more likely you are to actually be able to uh, mine a bit faster uh, on a Windows machine. Upwards of 8.5 gig was the limit I found before I started having crash errors. So if you have a system with more than 10 gig, don't go over 8.5. Otherwise you might get unlucky like me. And threads, this is a 4 thread system. So I was just doing the normal 2 and leaving it at that. So pretty much this is like the basic and this is how you would lead this one. The bit field plotting. I haven't experimented with this yet because I don't really want to. But basically it's with it disabled, it means it will take a bit longer to do the plotting. But it will be less strain on your CPU and memory which might make it better for running a Raspberry Pi. Or if you've got a CPU from before 2010 like it says. So it's like one of the old like... AMD or Intel ones from more like the uh, AM3s or the Intel like 7th gen I think that right on that period yeah then you put it on and it would kind of negate some of the problems you might have and then there's also the exclude file directory button now what that would do is that stops it uh when it's finished plotting going into the farming stage it leaves it in a plotted system and then you can set it to actually start mining and farming at a later date meaning that it would finish plotting and skip the last stage which takes quite a long time and you could plot more and more and more and more and, more, and so you could plot loads of plots quicker and then transfer it to a new machine or if you wanted to say on a raspberry pi and you really wanted to plot on a Raspberry Pi, you could do a crap load of plots and a load of plots in one go, and then set the farming at a later date once you've got all the plots set to kind of speed up the plotting stage, which, you know, could make sense. But for that to actually work, you need to have constant running and constantly be monitoring it because you have any errors. Once you've got all set up and running, and you've got your farming going, then you've got your farm section, which is very, very interesting. Tells you all the info you need to know about your pots, but I will include a screenshot because obviously I can't see it here because I haven't got any running. But I'll put a screenshot in of the one on my Windows machine and kind of show you how it's working since I kind of can't bring one in right now. But basically, it will just tell you about your uh, the current network plotting size, your plotting size, how long it recommends you take before you got any uh, income, like if you made any blocks, your number of plots, the amount you've made, the amount you've made without fees, just all the basic info about the system. There's a pretty good website, which I'll link below as well, which is a plotting calculator and it will tell you how much money you can make the current stats which have altered a lot is 12 terabytes which is what i'm going to be using in my system for the startup would make you about 700 dollars a month about two weeks ago or a week ago that was about 1500 dollars. so it's dramatically dropping because people are plotting a lot it's like 20 like 20 etibytes what i think it is which is a th like 200,000 or 2,000 petabytes or 200 petabytes it's a lot wherever it is but 
more and more and more being added but this is still only the uh solo mining stage and we have the full pool mining coming uh, soon hopefully which would then negate some of the issues of having to wait for a chance and wait for the ability to have enough to compete you would just be told you would earn this and you would earn that just kind of how like general like gpu mining or asic mining for example works but you know what you're going to be earning based on the stats it can provide but once that's all set up and going you can just leave it and with the raspberry pi you're using next to no power it's like a few hundred like a few watts you get yourself an enclosure with five drives in it you can be using about 130 watts to so say 180 for your entire system you could have uh, a five enclosure one where the limit's 18 terabytes so you could stick yourself in there a lovely what five 18 terabyte drives uh, and that would get you a lovely 90 terabytes and 90 terabytes uh, was just under the uh, the 1.7 thousand a month stat if I remember correctly from when I looked at it before you can be earning like getting onwards of two thousand dollars a month which is pretty good you might get lucky and make more, but it's kind of subjective. So I'll leave all the links for all these below, the the mounting, the Chia blockchain below. I'll try and find the Raspberry 64 ISO and the, the tool to mount it and try and leave all those in the link below. So you can grab all those things, set yourself up and get yourself going on the Raspberry Pi 4. So hopefully this has helped. And... Hopefully to see, see you guys all playing with your Raspberry Pis and mining some cheer and making some money. So for now, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.